When you look out on Lake Michigan today, it's pretty flat. But if we were to drain that, we would see 36 incredibly well-preserved shipwrecks and we could walk from one to the other. The collection ranges from the 1830s to the 1930s. So you have everything from a pre-Civil War wooden sailing ship all the way up to a 500-foot modern bulk freighter. And in between that is the entire story of westward expansion and immigration and settlement, innovation, technology, all captured in, in the shipwrecks that are in the sanctuary. Welcome to the Wisconsin Shipwreck Coast. This National Marine Sanctuary was designated in 2021 and is one of only 15 in the U.S. and two in the whole Great Lakes region. This 962 square mile sanctuary connects the cities of Two Rivers, Manitowoc, Sheboygan, and Port Washington. And today, we're going to travel up and down the Lake Michigan coastline to take it all in. Our first stop is at the historic 1860 Light Station in Port Washington to meet with Noah's Russ Green. The Wisconsin Shipwreck Coast National Marine Sanctuary is the 15th National Marine Sanctuary in a network of underwater parks Ooh. that are managed by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, so that's okay. NOAA. The system protects iconic underwater treasures across our nation. My burning question, am I able to see above the water? Is there like a glass bottom or how do I get to see some of these wrecks? So some of them you can see through a paddleboard, particularly oh. up in two rivers. Okay. Um, diving is a great way to do it. Uh, there's actually a new dive shop in the sanctuary. There's now two. And then there's this whole third dimension that's really evolved over the last couple of years, which is virtual experiences uh, and folks that you know may not come to the lakeshore. Can we deliver messages about conservation and our national maritime heritage to those folks? Can you tell me a little bit more about some current projects and things that we can look forward to in the future? Yeah, you know, on the water, we've got some research going on right now to actually map the entire sanctuary. So by the end of the summer, we hope to have a thousand square mile map of this area of Lake Michigan uh, in detail. Right now, we're out there with a sonar painting the lake bed with sound. Ooh. You'll be able to see the shipwrecks that we know about. So there's 36 known shipwrecks in the sanctuary, uh, but sonar is also a great way to find new shipwrecks. So we think there's a several dozen more shipwrecks to be discovered in the National Marine Sanctuary here. And so this information is great. It helps us find cultural resources, but it also tells us a lot about the natural aspects of Lake Michigan. But we also just wrapped up a 10-day project shooting uh, virtual reality film out here on the shipwrecks to be able to okay. create, you know, those headset experiences that, you know, that my kids are really into. <laughs> we also just put in real-time weather buoys. So if you're a boater, uh, you know, you can get a snapshot of the weather as it is right now and before you head out. So there's kind of a public safety aspect to that. But on shore, you know, we're about a year old right now. And so the next area we really want to focus on is education and, you know, create working groups with teachers and to figure out, you know, how can they leverage the sanctuary? What can the sanctuary do to support um, educators and the work they do and, and make an impact in the classroom? So that's wide open and that's an area that we'll be focusing on next. From Port Washington, we're headed all the way north to Manitowoc to visit the Wisconsin Maritime Museum and talk with Kathy Green about the importance of preserving our maritime history. There's really a rich maritime heritage throughout Wisconsin, so a lot of our shoreline communities already have somewhere that you can access all the great history that's out there below the waves as well as in our buildings. Just north of here, up in Two Rivers, Rogers Street Fishing Village, down in Sheboygan where there's a beautiful waterfront and beaches down there, and Port Washington as well. We were a ship building center, and really the Great Lakes were a transportation highway, especially between, uh, say, 1820 to 1920, that, that hundred year, you know, what we call the shipwreck century of vessels, hundreds and thousands of them flying the waves here, which helped fuel the growth of cities. You know, Chicago, Duluth, Green Bay, Milwaukee, none of these places would be able to develop if there wasn't a way to get people in and goods out. Wow, I'm excited. I can't wait to tour this museum. <laughs> yeah, the Wisconsin Maritime Museum has been here over 50 years for the state's Maritime Museum. And uh, behind us, you'll see the, the jewel in our crown, USS Cobia, uh, which is a World War II submarine. And not only can you tour Cobia, you can spend the night on the boat. Uh, we have a sub B&B program. 
I can stay out there. Well. You sure can. You sure can. Just like the 80 or so, you know, sailors who were on there back in World War II, she's fully restored to uh, her 1945 appearance. Honestly, I'm bl I'm blown away. Can you tell me a little bit more about what we'll find inside of the museum? Yeah, the exhibits there talk about everything from our first navigators, the indigenous peoples who use these waterways, to the innovations that came along with sailing schooners, and then all the way up to the shipbuilding today and the busy waterways that are just behind us. Can you tell me a little bit more about the connection between the sanctuary and the museum and how they're just tied together? Yeah, the, the work that they're doing, mapping the bottom of the lake, studying these shipwrecks, feeds right into our exhibits, our programs, and really helps flesh out the story that we're telling. Our last stop today is in Sheboygan to meet with Amy Wilson inside of an actual shipwreck. Can you tell me about what we're standing inside of? Right now we're located about in the middle of Lake Michigan in the city of Sheboygan at DeLand Park. We're standing inside one of the shipwrecks found in Lake Michigan. It's the Lottie Cooper. As topography changed in Sheboygan, the Lottie Cooper was discovered and it was brought upon shore as an exhibit. So Amy, I've been lucky enough to be able to tour from Port Washington to the Two Rivers to Manitowoc to here. Can you just kind of tell me a little bit about what stands out to you between the differences of all the locations and what you find to be the most interesting? To our south, we have Port Washington and they have the wonderful fishing history that they really flourished on. And to our north, Manitowoc and Two Rivers has the uh, Wisconsin uh, Maritime Museum, which really celebrates the uh, history of maritime culture. In the middle, we are working on what we call Visit Sheboygan STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And it's a virtual laboratory that will teach people how to live in the freshwater environment and how important the resource is. You are dressed to impress, so I, wanna, <laughs> I want recommendations from you. Can you tell me a little bit more about what people can expect here in Sheboygan? So we are the uh, Bratwurst capital of the world and the freshwater surfing capital of the world, otherwise known as the Malibu of the Midwest, okay. to surfers around the world. Freshwater surfing is huge here. Kayaking, stand-up paddle boarding, always a good time. Sailing, motor boating, and beaches. Beaches are the best Ooh. along Lake Michigan. The Great Lakes are one-fifth of the world's fresh water. It actually is one of the world's treasures. We're so fortunate that we just have this unlimited access to clean, fresh water. It's a huge asset for us, and you know, one of the things we do here at the museum and that the sanctuary does, even though we talk about history, we're interested in the health of the lake as well. It, it's really exciting that we have these sanctuaries coming into freshwater areas to help preserve these landmarks and preserve our resources for the future. This has, of course, only been an introduction to the Wisconsin Shipwreck Coast, and the fun here will always be evolving, so you'll need to come and see it for yourself and follow your own curiosity into an experience that is all your own.